I'm back with another video for you. <laughs> it's been a while. I'm not sure how long, but I'm back. I had more inspiration and I felt like sharing today. So in this video, I wanted to talk about the pitfalls of approaching human design from a mental space and the pitfall of knowing more about your design because there's so much information. You can learn about design for, I think, the rest of your life and still don't know any, everything. So it's just this, yeah, well of information and you can go deep. You can go very, very deep. But that's not what human design is all about. And I guess, I'm not sure, maybe this is something you recognize if you've been experimenting for a while or for a very long time. But this has been my experience from the, from the beginning. It was so interesting. Everything in human design is interesting, especially for my mind. And I noticed how much it was always focused on knowing more and knowing more about what this means and what that's, that means and what does this number say and what does that color mean and what is this gate all about and what is this line all about, my color, my motivation, my tone, my oh, everything. There's so much to learn. And well, I'm almost halfway in my experience now and it's, yeah, it's an interesting ride. And I've, I've really learned along the way what the pitfall is of knowing more about my design. Because I know a lot. I've learned a lot. I followed a lot of training. I followed a lot of um, workshops. But all that knowing doesn't do any good if you don't apply it, if you don't experiment for yourself ex with your strategy and with your authority. And I can give an example of this in my own life. Because everything that I know, the more I know, I can use that from a mental space. And, I, and the thing is that I observe my mind... telling me what to do from knowing about my design. So for example, the other day, I heard my mind come up with a story about me being a fifth line personality, which is all about being practical. So my mind came up with this story about, yeah, but maybe you should share this, or maybe it's very good to do that because you are a fifth line and you should be practical. So yeah. It makes sense, right? So that is such a funny thing to, to witness, to be aware of, that knowing about that, knowing that I'm fifth line, that's all about practicality, etc., etc., that there is projections there, and that has to do with reputation, and knowing all that, it can be very helpful, but it has only been helpful for me when I use it to become aware of how it plays out in my life. And the pitfall is when I try to use it from a mental space to get somewhere or to make decisions from that knowing. And another example is with my appetite determination which i also talk about in my latest latest podcast from a different perspective of self-love but knowing about my consecutive de determination from the beginning i approached it from this mental space because now i knew that okay for me it's healthy quote unquote or correct whatever that means to Eat one thing at a time. To eat consecutively. 
which is very rigid, which stems from the caveman, cavewoman um, time where they would be hunters and would eat one thing at a time. So a piece of meat or some berries or whatever they could find, they could hunt for. And in this day and age, that is a very rigid and very weird way to eat. And let alone, it's not even socially accepted. But when I approached this from, my, from a mental space, I got very... Hmm, cramped about it. Well, not cramped, but it was very... Forced. It didn't come from my mind. I would eat things that I didn't have appetite for. I would eat things that I didn't have a response for, but they came, I would eat them because I knew, or at least I thought they would be good for me because they were consecutive. And that has really, I haven't really spoken about this, but that has really been harming for my body and it had a really big effect on my digestion and my bowel movements and my stool and not in a in a in a good way for so it didn't really do any good for my health it actually made me more rigid it actually made me force myself to do things against my sa my sacral response or it even had me made me do things that I didn't even have a response for it made me initiate things it made me eat things that were not really actually beneficial for my health for my body so that is something that I experienced in knowing more and these are just simple examples but maybe you have your own and there can be more examples of of things to know about your design but they are actually they can be harmful and they actually can also be useless if you don't really experiment with it because in the end this whole system and the whole map and the whole translation of the energy and and the 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 design that is just in the chart it doesn't mean anything when there, there's no context when there's no real example when there's when there's no lived experience right so yeah i guess it's it's important to talk about these things and yeah i, I felt like sharing because so many people around me want to know more about their design which i get i totally get it and I would say, yeah, learn more if you want to learn more, um, but use it for awareness and to become conscious of what is happening in your experiment, what is happening in your daily life, what is happening in your... Hmm, Yeah, in the experience of deconditioning. And it takes time. And um, I just read a post of, from someone who's very um, far in their experiments with human design. And she also mentioned that it takes seven years to decondition the cells. And that is something that we, hmm, we don't want to acknowledge <laughs> or we think we can maybe bypass it and... Um, I don't know if it's if it's if it is exactly seven years. I I think maybe it's a different experience for everyone. I cannot say that. I cannot be the judge of that. So um, yeah, be the judge of that for yourself. But um, yeah, changing your cells takes time, and and I can see that now. Um, yeah, and the most important thing is to listen to your body and for me it's following my sacral response and it has taken a while it has taken me years 
already to actually feel that sacral energy and feel what it means to have a response from my body and to follow it. Those are two different things. And if you want to start your experiment, if you want to enter your experiment, and if you are a sacral being like me, that is, the, that is what I would say um, that you could, should focus on, or not should, but that you could focus on because, yeah, the whole knowledge and all the information is nothing without your experiment. So it's about coming back to your body and coming, coming to learn what it means and what it feels like to have your own authority and to, to be in contact with that authority. And for some people, it can be very diff difficult, like it was for me, especially if you've been living up in your head and your mind all the time. And, and also for some people, their authority is less simple or less straightforward than, for example, a, a sacral response. But it might even be helpful then to have exchanges and have support in your life from people who have the same authority and have been experimenting for a while already or, are this, or, or people who are the same type as you. I think that can be very helpful and very uh, beneficial to come to that space and to learn to connect to your body um, and become aware of all the mental chatter and how your mind still wants to be in control and takes a little detour by trying to learn more about human design. So that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.